This program is brought to you by the Act of Geek Foundation at Piscataway Park. Welcome. I am Shamika Berry, the Interpretation Coordinator at the Akakik Foundation. Here we steward the sacred homeland of the Piscataway people, and we bring to you stories on the National Colonial Farm. You will be meeting a member of the Bolton family, which is a fictional family that we created based off of families that lived in this area. You will also meet Kate Sharper, a woman who was actually enslaved in this area. We tell her story along with those families through the Boltons to let you know how they lived during the 18th century. And now we present to you Tobacco, a Cash Crop. Welcome. This is the Bolton Farm. They are tobacco farmers. I am Kate Sharper and I belong to the Boltons. I sleep here in the kitchen, in the loft above. The Boltons, their house is outside of the kitchen garden. I was raised a slave many miles away from here and I belong to Mistress Bolton's family. They too were tobacco farmers and my whole life has been about tobacco. Fighting the flea beetle, pulling off hornworms. Oh, they are the most horrible creatures you would ever care to see. My mother and grandfather taught me how to properly pull off the hornworm. I remember the first time I did it as a child. It was so, so horrible. As I pulled it off, it spit out everything that it had eaten all over my hand did not want lunch or dinner that day. Have you ever seen a hornworm? They can grow to be this long and be as fat as your thumb. They're the same green as the tobacco leaves themselves, save for yellow and black stripes that go down their back and one little horn that just wiggles at you. They're the most horrible creatures ever. When Mistress Bolton married Master Bolton, I came here part of their property. They built the kitchen first. I slept in the barn and then as they gained more money from growing more tobacco, they were able to build their home. And then they started to have their children. I am to tend to the tobacco, ensure that it, it grows to be big and strong and then once it has dried properly, it is packed into barrels and, and then sit down the river and sold. And that is how the Boltons get their money. But the tobacco has cost me a great deal. I was taken from my mother upon mistress's marriage and, and been here many, many years. My last name is Sharper, though, because I, too, am married. And my husband, Tom, oh, he is a free man. It may seem unheard of that there is a free man in 1770, but he tells me that there is a large number of people who look like us, who are free. I believe they said, uh, he calls it Baltimore. Well, Tom and I have been married for a great number of years, and together we have a wonderful son named Jack. And because Tom is free, he is able to be paid for the work that he does here, but the Boltons had to use so much money for medicine some years back for their youngest son, Josiah, that, that Thomas had to find work elsewhere. We are very thankful that he has found another tobacco farmer further up the road who is willing to rent land to him. He grows his own tobacco. And late at night after I have finished my work here, of course, I steal away and, and I run to Tom and and I help him with his tobacco, pulling off hornworms, fighting the flea beetle as the seedlings grow, helping him to hang the tobacco so that it may dry properly. Jack, who would always be so helpful, he is such a smart boy. I've taught him to read. 
Oh, yes, I too know how to read. You see my pocket. I have embroidered my letters. Young Miss Tra Charity has taught me how to embroider my letters so that I may read, and I spend many nights in the loft just sewing away. And that is how I taught Jack to read. And he is so brave. He would always be the one to say, Mother, I shall jump to the highest rafter and hang the tobacco. And I was always most grateful for it, for if I were to fall and break a hip, it would be no help or no use to anyone. And so he would leap from rafter to rafter, nearly to make my heart stop. And that was when he was younger, but Jack is not here. The flea beetle that destroyed the tobacco as a seedling was so terrible some years back. Jack was in his twelfth year, and almost half of the crop was destroyed. I wept as I saw the plants were gone, for I knew that it would be seen to be my fault. I never saw so much worry on Master's face, and I heard he and, and Mistress in the garden one night talking how they would have to sell some property to purchase more seed. I thought it would be cows or, or even the horses, but they chose to sell my son. Master said he would fetch a fine price. He was such a strong, strapping young slave. In my son's 12th year, they took him down to the river. They thought they could sell him without me being there, but I knew. And I refused to go and I stayed on the banks. It felt as if my heart was being ripped out as I saw my son go down the river. All I could do was scream, give me back my son. But my words were not heard. I fell to my knees and I thought I would die. I took to my bed for three weeks. Master was angry, but I did not care. Mistress thought that perhaps if Master let me grow some things in the garden that it would give me the reason to want to give up, to get up. Can you imagine? He thought tending to plants and raising them would comfort my heart from losing my son. But mother always said that I was a clever, clever girl. And I thought to myself, if I grew more fruits and vegetables, some that master and mistress would not miss, nor did they care about, I could take them to Tom. And when he goes to market to sell his tobacco, he could sell the fruits and vegetables and we could earn money that way and put his money together with the money of the fruits and vegetables and we could put it together and one day purchase Jack's freedom. For you see, Jack is now in his 17th year and he nears a man. And though I am trapped to this land and to the tobacco, and it has cost me both my son and my husband, I believe that if we work hard and we earn the money that we can, we will see Jack to be free because there is nothing that I want more in this world than for my son to be free like his father and not a slave like his mother.